Well, I declare that the Marine Corps is in fact a religion. And once you receive your baptism and communion and confirmation in that religious institute, the Marine Corps, you are a Marine for life. Once you pass all the requirements of being a Marine, baptized, the communion and the confirmation of the Marine Corps, you are a Marine for life. And as such, the vestiges of all religious practices have our full protection under the Constitution of the United States. And one of the vestiges of the Marine Corps religion is to be armed and to use those arms against those who are enemies of the American way of life, against the American Constitution, against our freedoms, and against our history and institutions as set forth by the founding fathers of this nation. So let's let's get it straight to you, um, to the usurper in the in the uh, <laughs> in the Fruit Loop House right now, that uh, we will make this 100% clear that the Marine Corps is a religion. It is a religion. Once a Marine, always a Marine. You can never leave it. You can never leave it whether you want to or not. That's the way I look at it. And, uh, you know, um, let me put it to you this way. You know, there's been a lot of things abused in the major media, and uh, I'm going to look at it, the Marine Corps as in my participation in it, that it is lifelong and it will be that way forever. And not just even after I die, but it's going to be that way in my memory and it's going to be that way forever. That's the way it's going to be. So, let me put it to you this way. Actually, I ordered one of these flags of the Marine Corps. I like this flag better with the dark banner on it for some reason. Uh, it's a little more stealthy. Um, you know, it looks a little more, um, you know, not too much out there. But then again, you can see it. I always like the back, black background on flags. I don't know why. But then again, I don't know. That's just the way it is. So, anyway, uh, I actually look at it this way. You know, Marines are in it as one unit, no matter what. Everybody's looking for their own survival. But then again, and they realize their own survival depends on the, the survival of their fellow Marines and the backup they get from their fellow Marines. But, you know, what is the purpose of the Marine Corps? What is the actual religion of the Marine Corps? It is to protect the fundamental rights of all individual Americans. But it is not to protect the rights of Americans that are here to destroy those fundamental rights of other Americans who are working against the American way of life, that are working to destroy the Constitution, in particular the Bill of Rights as envisioned by the Founding Fathers. Those are the enemies of America. And as such, the religion of the Marine Corps is to use the vestiges of their religion, which includes all arms at their disposal, to remove the evil that it will be set forth upon us by these other elements in this country that are out to destroy our way of life. That's exactly what it is. It's not a jihad. It is a defensive position. That's all it is. But a good defense has to realize that uprooting evil and destroying evil is of utmost importance, and that is our religion. And that's going to be our religion forever. It's our religion whether we wear the uniform currently or not, or whether we get the direct deposit right now or not. That is our religion. So I want to actually point out to some other things, as President Barack Obama is pointing out to, that we have usurpers in the White House. Actually, these were plants by, you know, President Obama has actually been somebody that was planted by George Soros. I know he, uh, Hillary Clinton looked like she was going to be the front runner on a ticket for a while, then all of a sudden it was President Barack Obama that was the big sabotage -y. But it wasn't really him. It was really at the behest of George Soros. But what is George Soros' main plan for America? To destroy it. To destroy it. Actually, a lot of people who voted for President Barack Obama didn't really know what the hell they were getting in the first place. And, uh, you know, it's becoming a lot more apparent now. But let me put it to you this way. Um, people still don't want to believe it. But, you know, they don't call uh, Michelle Big Mama for nothing. I'll tell you that right now. She's Big Mama and uh, that's... Uh, that's, uh, that's Barack's main squeeze over there, so whatever. But you know, the thing is, it's all hidden. And let me put it to you this way. You know, if they could pull this over the wool over your eyes and they could fool you on this deal, it didn't fool me because, well, first off, I didn't vote for Romney or McCain or Mc Obama. You know, the last two elections, I went for other. And I'm, like, totally disgusted with McCain and his, I know to deal with his POWs and how he betrayed them. 
even though he was a POW himself. He's a despicable person. Romney actually was better than McCain, but he flip-flopped so many damn times, I didn't trust him at all. And I didn't trust Obama because I knew he was a Marxist, and I know he's a Muslim, and he's and his main advisor is a Muslim born in Iran, who is actually uh, somebody who's a main backer of, of Sharia law, which is Valerie Girard. Now, I know what happened with... Uh, you know, Joan Rivers here, uh, she was murdered because she told the truth about Michelle Obama. Yeah, but you know, I got less of a problem with her being a transsexual than I do. Actually, I don't even have a problem with her being a transsexual. She could do what the hell she wants. Obama could be gay. I don't give a damn. How's that? I don't care. But I realize one thing. They're selling us down the river to China, and they're also selling us down the river to radical Muslims, or let's put it to this way, Islam in general, which is a political movement. It's not a religious movement. Forget about this religious movement garbage. It's a political movement. And you know what? If Islam is, is can be considered a religion, the Marine Corps is now a religion. Anybody's a Marine is a Marine for life. And you know what? This is why this Muslim occupying our, our White House is so hell-bent on destroying the lives of veterans. He's a weasel, man. That's all there is to it. I don't give a shit if he's gay or not, but I can tell you one thing. The main thing is, when he pushes this um, Sharia law on the United States, and it's actually, he's the predecessor that's, you know, he's going to be out in a year, but it's basically establishing a lot what's going to happen in the future. Gays and transsexuals are going to be killed. Even though he's the biggest hypocrite in the world, and even though the people in Iran on the top, they're doing all kinds of stuff that they, the, the people that are regular common people in Iran can't do, they, the people on the top do it, just like with the President Barack Obama, just like with uh, child molester Vladimir Putin. They do whatever they want to do, but everybody else, they, they receive the harshest punishment. That's exactly what goes on. So, I mean, if you're one of these gay or transsexual people supporting Barack Obama for that, remember that this guy's setting up Sharia law so he can kill your ass. And you know what? I'm not here to freaking put you down. Understand? Get it? I'm not here to put you down. Even though you're in a minority, you are protected because you're an individual. That's the way I look at it. You're protected because you're an individual. This guy, Barack Obama, and his wife is a sellout. That's the biggest problem. Now, we got Hillary Clinton up here. You know, she sucks up to Israel all the time in some of her speeches. But you know what? It's all false. Totally false. And you know why I know that? Because her main squeeze girlfriend, lickety-spit lesbian, is a Muslim brotherhood, sisterhood, whatever you want to call her. That's her main lesbian girlfriend. That's been her girlfriend for freaking years, man. Um, <laughs> she's in with the Muslim brotherhood all the way. Actually, what may be going on is I think the elite are foolishly thinking they can um, use Islam and Muslims to uh, as a power to take over America, and they think they can control it. I got news for you, dumbass elites. It ain't going to happen. Because <laughs> first off, if the Muslims or Islamics had their way, the first people they would kill for breaking the laws of their religion would be Hillary and Barack Obama. They'd be dead meat. They would be. They'd be dead meat. So, but you know, as it is, you know, they, they they put the big farce on about women's rights and shit with the case of Hillary Clinton. You know, and she's like, she'll support Saudi Arabia where they don't even let women drive, right? And, uh, you know, they got stuff like with Barack Obama. He's putting on all this stuff about with gay rights and, and stuff, but he's not he's not protecting the gays because actually he's, he's pushing Sharia law per his advisor. Um, Valerie Girard. It's in the early stages, but they're already pushing for it, man. Like, it's kid gloves. Now, the big joke with Bill Clinton was, I could tell you this, you know, when this deal first started out with Hillary uh, and, uh, and Bill back in college days, you know what the deal was? Hillary was such a bitch, she couldn't be approached, just like her daughter Chelsea, right? Same way with the $600,000 NBC job. Well, I'm going to tell you the deal is that Hillary couldn't be approached except for a guy like Bill because, you know what Bill saw? Two legs and a chocha, you know? He says, I don't give a shit. I can still screw her. I don't give a damn. She's not, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's getting that. I'll go for it. 
and he didn't care. So he, he wasn't afraid of her because he just figured it's another piece of ass. That's basically how that relationship started. I can tell you that right now. But she's big mama Hillary to Clinton. Uh, Clinton, and, uh, You know, the whole thing is they're all dirty. But we got a lot of different things going on here in the United States right now. What they're doing is they're trying to divide us up. What I'm saying is let's watch for all the angles. Um, off the coast of Florida, they had this last year, the Russian ships. I think it was kind of like, you know, Putin testing all the garbage again with He's always doing this with uh, the Russian planes. They were heading to the California testing the defenses of America and stuff. Now, don't get hell bent out of shape about um, you know Russia being so freaking strong militarily. They're not. They they really aren't. But there's a lot of insidious games going on in the inside with Obama that are actually causing a lot of division. In other words, if we're united. We got no problem with any of our enemies, man. Forget about it. If we're in a disarray and we're fighting each other, then we got a major problem. Right now, you know, you're hearing all this stuff about Jade Helm and stuff. I don't know exactly what's going on with that, but they got Russian ships off the coast of freaking Texas. What the Russians and Vladimir Putin is looking to do is to actually support a Texas secessionist movement. That's fucked up, man. I can tell you that right now. You know, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people like, you know, support the Confederate flag today. I don't know. It's got a totally different meaning. It doesn't even mean secede from the United States of America or anything like that. And it was basically the Civil War started about um, the South paying a lot of taxes for the tariff on the cotton and the money getting spent up north. And they weren't getting the financial benefits of the, uh, you know, the tariff on the cotton. And there's a lot of garbage myths they freaking tell you about, you know, the South in the North. is. I already went into that. There's a bunch of hypocrites in the North. But the thing is, they're all trying to divide people up, set each other on each other's throats. And this is one of the games that Igor Panarin talked about, one of the Russian professors, back in 2008. He was saying that the United States would break up into 10 parts by 2010. He was totally wrong. But then again, it tells you what the Russians want to do. They want the Texas secessionist movement because they could balkanize the United States. Actually, this stuff, even with the uh, Confederate flag today, has been um, you know, a balkanization movement by the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center who released those couple of those pictures with Dylan Roof, or, or uh, where at least two of them I know were, were photoshopped. Uh, it's designed to balkanize America. Now, I'm going to say this. If you're black and you hate this flag and it reminds you of racism, because I know the KKK and stuff had this flag in their marches and stuff, it means different things to different people. Like, to me, it means rebel against the bullshit. You know, if you got a little old lady out there freaking sticking her head out and she's getting pissed off at you and she's going to pour it to the freaking homeowners association because you're running your leave blower or some crap and it's making too much noise, you know, I look at rebel against all the freaking nosy busybodies, you know, rebel against the homeowners association, the IRS, uh, too much freaking uh, taxes, or whatever the hell else you have. But if you don't like the freaking Confederate flag and you're black and you say to yourself, man, you know, I don't like that flag, well, go modify it. Make it a, the black Confederate flag or make it the black rebel flag. Let's use that term, even though the Confederates don't like calling it the rebel. We just call it rebel, rebel against the bullshit. And, you know, if you like the freaking traditional way, fine. You know, there, there's the traditional way. But, uh, you know, I look at it like this. The freaking game that's going on right now is to divide the country up into a million different pieces and get people to fight each other and all this kind of shit. And that's the game that's been going on. And, you know, they're using, like, one of the freaking, uh, you know, parasitic freaking organisms in our country is actually um, Sharia law that they're trying to institute through, you know, the will of people are going to all these mosques. And like I call this, a lot of these mosques are freaking just nothing but dens of terrorist potential terrorists has been uh, evidenced by the shooting of four Marines in cold blood at the recruiting station in Tennessee. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to call the Marine Corps a religious institution now. I'm going to call it a, lab a label a religious institution. Once you go through your baptism, once you go through your uh, confirmation, and once you go through your um, communion, hey, you're in it. You're in it forever. That's your religion, and that's the way it is. You know, it doesn't matter if you're still on a, on a green team, you're wearing a green uniform, or you're freaking getting a direct deposit once a Marine, always a Marine, and you're always going to be protecting the U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights. Now, I also want to freaking uh, point to something else. 
this guy, he runs Jihad Watch. You know, I like and know a lot of you YouTuber yo-yos out there freaking like to look at videos about his brother Nathaniel asshole. I'm going to call him that because I don't think the guy's a freaking priest at all. I don't know where the hell he came from. Uh, this is run by Robert Spencer. I mean, he's got some really good videos on Jihad Watch and exactly what Islam teaches. Islam teaches the eradication of all non-believers. And, you know, a lot of people get all bent out of shape about what happened during the way back when with the Crusades. I'll tell you what, the Crusades came centuries after a lot of freaking Muslim, oppressive Muslim rule in Europe, and it was a defensive maneuver. You know, all of North Africa got taken over by Islam. There was formerly Christian, man. It's a radical political movement, and it doesn't give you any rights. And, you know, it's so freaking sick that, you know, I hear you got all these gays and lesbians and transgenders supporting Obama, and at the one side, he's like acting like he's their friend, but on the other side, the reality situation is, per his top advisor, who's always been around on his, been the guy, lady, the guy, whatever she is, uh, Valerie Girard, that created Barack Obama, along with Soros, is to actually push for Sharia law in the United States. And you know what's going to happen to gays, lesbians, and transsexuals, and bisexuals? They're going to be dead. It's all been against Sharia law. So don't let them fool you, man. Don't let them fool you. Now, I'm not like a real religious person. I'm just like a common sense person. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not religious in Christianity, real strict or anything like that at all. You know, I mean, I'm more or less common sense. And, uh, but you know, if you want to look at really how radical freaking Islam is, uh, go take a look at uh, Jihad Watch. And, you know, you can see where, you know, the FBI was, you know, waffling and stuff like that, saying, well, we don't know if the shooter in Tennessee, Chattanooga, was actually um, <laughs> a Muslim or Islamic you know, at, at all just because of his name. I was like, get the fuck out of here, you dumbass. If they're that freaking politically correct, man, who the hell needs these assholes in government? And you know what it is? You're all bowing down to Obama. That's what the deal is. You're all bowing down to him. So anyway, I want to put this in video out here. I don't know how, what kind of video this is going to be exactly or what kind of uh, you know, category it could possibly be in. It's uh, not exactly political. It's not exactly religious. It's, not, it's actually common sense. That's really what I call it. Because, you know, I definitely am not a right-wing conservative. I can tell you that right now. And actually, I think right-wing conservatives are about as pinheaded as left-wing, extreme left-wing liberals. I don't know if I'm middle of the road either because, you know, I get really pissed off when you got a bunch of pinheads out there freaking throwing down too many rules. It's a matter of let's defend our nation against tyrants. You know, hey man, everybody can do their own thing. But when you got freaking religious groups like in Islam that are freaking conspiring to freaking set down uh, harsh, myopic rules where they're the freaking governing body, screw them. They're the enemy, man. You're the enemy. And I declared him the enemy. And you know what the deal is? Uh, with the Marine Corps, as far as I'm concerned, it's now considered, I consider it a, relig a religious cult. Once a Marine, always a Marine. And you're, you're in it forever. And you know what? This is one thing the Obama administration realizes because you know what? They consider veterans a danger. Oh, well, good. You were, you were danger? Good. I'm glad you think that, asshole, because I'll tell you one thing. I, I consider Obama a major danger. And, you know, he's been trained in the Karl Marx philosophy, but not only that, he's been trained in, in the totalitarian Islamic philosophy. And at the same time, he's going to sell anybody out down the river that supported him. Uh, you know, the guy is not, you know, the other thing is, one of the things he got through there, too, because he was uh, our first black president, supposedly black. I don't know, he's half white, he's half black, right? What is he, does that really mean he's black? I don't know. It means he's half black. He's our first half black president. How's that? I guess that would be more of a fair statement. But, you know, the other thing is, since he's got all these ties to uh, Islam, all the way back in Kenya, man, his all his ancestors on both his mother's and father's side, we're slave traders. You know, I got that information from a conservative lesbian blogger. Uh, she found the information out that was printed in the Baltimore Sun in 2007 before he was even elected, a year before he was elected to his first term as, as president. She found that information that Barack Obama, she was a gay lesbian, um, she's a lesbian blogger, conservative blogger. 
she found out that Barack Obama, actually his ancestors, and it makes a lot of sense because Islam was big time involved in freaking slave trading from Africa to, you know, the, the Holy Lands up there in the Islam land, whatever it is in Persia, for years. His, both his, an, his ancestors on both his mother and father's side were big time slave owners and slave traders. But, you know, this is actually revealing to me that the elite are screwing up. Because they think, I think they're using this Islam and the Muslim Brotherhood and all that type of stuff as a tool for their control. And you know what? It's going to backfire on them. Big time. But you know what it means for us? We're screwed, man. Because once they, if it backfires on the elite, we're double screwed. That's the reality of it. You know, that's why you got Hillary Clinton with the lesbian girlfriend, you know, her lesbian lick. Uh, she's in the Muslim Brotherhood. She's the wife of the Muslim Brotherhood guy. Big time supporter. I mean, she, she'd make some speeches about supporting Israel. She don't support Israel. She's a load of it, man, all the way. She's a load of it all the way. And, you know, it's like that's exactly the way politicians are, man. They tell you, tell you one thing, and then they sell you down the river as soon as they get in pol- into power. Actually, I'm a little wary. I'm a, quite a bit wary of Trump, too, because Trump used to be a big-time supporter of the Clintons since 1990 and a Democratic machine. And he used to be a big-time supporter of illegal immigration, uh, putting putting 30 million illegal aliens on a fast track to citizenship. That was Trump before. All his all the time, from Pat Buchanan arguing with him to Mitt Romney arguing with him, till just now, he changed 180 degrees. I don't know what the deal is with this guy, man. I don't trust him either. So, I mean, you know... <laughs> There's probably somebody out there that's good, but I don't know who the hell it is right now. Actually, I probably do know, but, um, you know, I'm not going to make this a political freaking video. I'm just going to tell you that, hey, man, the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps, and, you know, you can look at it different ways, and uh, the Marine Corps is actually religion, though. That's what I look at it. And, uh, you know, if you don't like the rebel flag, the Confederate flag, and you're black, and you consider it a racist symbol, well, do what the hell you want, but you know, if you if you can freaking stomach it, um, change the colors around a little bit and consider your own rebel flag against the bullshit, because that's kind of how I look at the Confederate flag. I look at the Confederate flag as rebelling against all the bullshit, but still supporting, definitely supporting our true American way of life. That's the way I look at it. You know, I don't even look at it from the vestiges of history or anything. I look at it as just rebelling against all the bullshit. That's that's just, that, you know, a lot of people do think of it that way too, man. Tell you the truth. But, you know, I don't want it to be a flag of division. I want it to be a flag of unity. And if you can't stand the red, white, and blue colors, man, and you're black, you want to make it a little different for yourself, I mean, I mean, do what you want. I mean, if you don't want to hate it, fine, hate it. It's a free country, man. But, you know, I just look at it as, uh, you know, a, little, a lot different from, like, you know, the major media is trying to portray it. But, I'll tell you one flag I always like, and I like the Marine Corps flag. Actually, I like this version of it. I ordered this just now. Um, I ordered this version of it. I like this flag better for some reason than the red on the background. I don't know why, but it looks cool. Maybe it's that biker black sh- shit, you know. I like the biker black, man. I don't know why. Yeah, mechanic black, you know. Mechanic black, black T-shirt. You always have black T-shirt on, black jeans, right? No blue jeans, black jeans, black T-shirt. But anyway... um, yeah, I'll look at it this way. The Marine Corps is nothing but a real, true, blue American um, religious religion institution. That's exactly what it is. And we have our sacraments, and our sacraments are to purge evil in this country, wherever we may find it. And uh, we have our tools that we implement our sacraments with. And, uh, you know, that's our arms, our force of arms. So anyway, that's how it is. And... Uh, uh, you know, happy uh, many more years to the Marine Corps. It may it survive many, many, many more centuries. And actually, I guess if we went back to our, uh, I know sometimes they say the Marine Corps actually doesn't go back to November 10th, 1775, Ton Tavern. It was actually disbanded and it was reinstituted permanently by Congress. But then again, you know, you could think of the Marine Corps actually going back to the British time for all, for all you know, if you want to think of it that way. But, you know, whatever. It's got to start somewhere. And uh, I want to say this is going to be a religion. I say the Marine Corps is a religion. And it needs to be protected under the First Amendment rights of, our relig- of, of the Constitution of the United States. And our weapons are part of our religion. That's an integral part of our religion and our method of worship.